I think nowadays music is probably one of the easiest means to lose your moral sense. It is music is audio pornography today. That's what it is. It's explicit, it's shameless, it's vulgar, it takes your sense of humanity away from you, it makes you look at women as objects, worse than objects, worse than animals. Just as these people are talking about women like they're talking about, you know, uh, an animal really. It, it, it objectifies women and especially I've noticed a lot of the brothers that I know of Muslims that are really into the hip hop scene and they're kind of doing the hiv of the, the song, right? They're memorizing the song and they're really good at reciting it with perfect tajweed too, right? And so they, they do that and it's just horrible language, horrible, horrific, horrific language. You know, the only simple response I have to that, if you have any regard for the Book of Allah, that you really think it's from Allah, بِئْسَلِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ iman. Even the name, the mention, the word of something, the word for something bad, is terrible once you have faith. Even the mention of something terrible is, is horrible for you, it's harmful for you after you have faith. You have to have a clean tongue. You have to say what you say. Tell my slave to say that which is the best. Say what is the best. Say good things from your mouth. So this is the first thing. When you say horrible things and you say things that are in direct contradiction to the moral gauge Allah gifted us with, then obviously you're, you're, you're deviating from your natural fitrah, your predisposition to turn to Allah. And when you constantly you know, listen to garbage like that, then you get deviated. And you don't find pleasure except in disobedience to Allah. And that's a sign of a sick heart. So one has to distance themselves from this. This is the first step. And I, I'll tell you, when, this is my personal measure. This is not a fatwa. This is, it's my personal analysis. You don't have to take it. But if a person finds listening to the Qur'an annoying, after they've been listening to hip-hop and this and that for a long time, and as soon as somebody puts the Qur'an in the car, you know what to say? Oh man, turn that off, man. I, I, I don't want to, I just want to talk. And they immediately, they, they get a little annoyed when they hear the Qur'an. That actually means the shayateen have taken over. And they're constantly making waswas out of this person. Because what do the shayateen hate the most? It's they hate the Qur'an. They hate the word of Allah. They, they flee, it hurts them. So you know what they do? They, because this person has let the shayateen, the devils into his heart, they start pinching at his heart when he hears Qur'an. And he says, I don't want to hear this. Right? It's like, surge, it's like pulling a tooth for this person. This happens. When you try to give this person a reminder from Allah's word, they get annoyed by it, like agitated, like an allergic reaction. Why? Because they've let the shayateen in. To let them out, the first thing you got to do is stop supplying them with fuel. This is fuel. This useless uh, wasting of time, this is fuel for shaitan. They love that you waste your time. They love it. Because the, the one asset, the, the one piece of wealth Allah gave every human being is time. And what is music and TV and YouTube and Facebook and MySpace and like Twitter and whatever else? If you're spending hours and hours and hours on this stuff, what is it except destroying your time? It's taking that one asset away from you. Shaitan would love nothing more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the strength to get away from these temptations. My advice that I keep going over, I can't get enough of giving this advice, find better friends. Find company that is not into these things and try to spend more time with them and inshallah you'll wean yourself off of these habits. Bi